So, note, a laser printer needs to warm up to print, so it can go goes on to like 200 degrees Celsius. Some HD, HP models can go on to 460 Celsius. Well, basically toner is a plastic, that's why it never bleeds. So when it get wet, the paper get wet, it, it never um, goes away. And then um, melted by the heat, so the plastic will melt it by the heat and squeeze onto the paper with the pressure by the toner, uh, no, printer roller. So once it onto the paper, the plastic, which is the toner, can be reheated and melted, and then great for printing circuit design and refusing it. Photo paper uh, for the, the copper board and then tint it, and that, that's a pro process I'll cover later. But for now, uh, let's go to ironing the actual. So assuming that you clean the board, now you have to iron like much more. So the laser printer has this down to an art. Uh, it has a roller, it has a heat, and it can apply that evenly, but you don't. You, you, need, to, uh, you need to do some uh, work on it. We substitute the heat of the roller with the uh, household iron, and we use plenty of el elbow grease and a dash of luck. You always need that luck. So you keep ironing, keep going, still at it, yeah, maybe it's no, 45 minutes, and uh, <laughs> for, just really? for this oh. one, just for this board, it's this tiny board. I ironed for 30 minutes, and uh, yeah, okay, so we're done ironing. So the toner is refilled. So hopefully after you wrestle with the iron, uh, everything went well, and the paper and the uh, toner separated, and it's now gave up a spot on the paper, it's now on the copper, and we're ready to go. If not, you have to repeat everything again. That's why you need that dash of luck. So drilling. So did we use a uh, landing machine? <laughs> Has a I tried that. I tried that. I actually bought one with it. You have to go through a lot for it to. Did it work? I bought the GNC model. The, yeah. they, they say you buy the GNC model, but what happened? I don't know. I bought the wrong model or something. It had a, a, a some kind of guide, paper guide at the end. Yeah. You're supposed to remove that. I didn't yeah. want to remove that. You and I'm always caught up. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't want to go through that hassle. So, and again, like, like you say, you have to go through like 15 or 16 times. Why not just iron it? Now, that's the board I did for today's show and tell, and I just wanted to take this mess uh, and turn it into a board, because when I was making uh, my board for lab, lab 5, I think, I had 12 sensors, 12 optical sensors, and that was a lot of, that was a lot of chip, a lot of transistors, um, sorry, a lot of uh, resistors and whatnot, and so this is what I came up with, a uh, double-sided board, and it, and it worked, uh, but I just, so uh, let's go through what I did yesterday for that one. Um, I made my uh, schema in Eagle Eagle CAD. Uh, there's the uh, the emitter, IR emitter, and the receiver, and a bunch of resistors and the comparator over there. Then I I brought it into the, the board software, which created this this layout for me which uh, by the auto router uh, feature. But the default configuration that it had produced very thin lines and by, by experience I know that if I print out too thin of a line and then try an iron up, it might not actually be able to fuse onto the board. So you need to get really thick lines. So I went back, changed the rules a bit and then it gave me this which is the exact, uh, right here, this one, uh, exact layout. I then printed that out so that's the layout. I printed out. That's on the, the blue sheet, the, tra the transfer paper. I cut it to size and then mar marked the board. That's a copper board uh, that I was going to use. Uh, and I cut it so you can probably see the line here. Uh, that's the, the line I marked to cut. And then I went ahead and cut it. But then it left me with sharp edges and you had to sand, sand that down too. Um, not necessary, but if you don't want to cut yourself, it's worth it. Then I had to sand, sand the, the board down. I couldn't find any scissors, so I had to use those things. Ridiculous. Also, after sanding it down, it gives a nice clean surface, gets all the grit off. Uh, you need to get that grit off for, uh, to be able to have that uh, the toner refuse properly. You also need a, a steel wool, uh, a sponge, and a, and a bathroom cleaner, and you need to scrub like no tomorrow.
once everything is done, you will have a finish, which is like a, uh, a mirror, literally. And now you're ready to refuse. So you get your you get your board. I don't know if you yeah, can't see it. So there's the board. There's a paper upside down on it, and uh, there's the iron. And while while ironing, it's good to just put pressure on, but not every iron has a uh, flat surface, it will have a curved surface and you can't pl uh, apply even pressure. So once, well, every now and then you gotta use the tip of the, the, uh, the ironing uh, machine there or whatever, uh, to actually go in and uh, put pressure on every, every millimeter of that, of that uh, the, the paper. Once you're sure that everything has transfused, uh, uh, transferred properly, you'll have to let it cool and then soak it in water and let the paper uh, separate from the board automatically. Don't don't uh, fight with it. If you do, it's it's literally like seeing uh, words fall apart. I, I wrote my so when I did this first, I wrote my name just to test, and when I pulled it apart, I actually saw the B and the A just fall apart and wash away. And it was pretty disappointing. So if everything went right, you should see a complete circuit. And next, I should have done a ground pour, what they call a ground pour. Basically, it's you know, they apply toner to everywhere to save that extra copper. So because the etching would be used up more if you expose more copper. But I didn't have that kind of time, so I applied uh, a, a painter's masking tape and covered the copper that I didn't want to uh, to be used up. And it actually speeds the etching process up as well. The etching, again, as I said, is ferric chloride. It's pretty nasty stuff. It's, it's $9 of pure evil. Uh, it will corrode everything. It will stain everything. I, I, used, I used it without gloves, and now my nails are all black, too. So uh, a better solution to use is ammonium for sulfide. Is it? It's a crystal. Yeah. It makes it it's a more clear solution. It's, it's less. Uh, okay. Okay, that's better. I, and I and I read somewhere that if you leave this, uh, I even if it's you know slightly open, the cap, and its uh, its fumes are leaking a bit, it would corrode every every kind of metal you have around it. It's and not I, that so yeah, I don't know. So after two and a half, uh, half hours, because this um, the etching I'm using, I've reused a couple of times now to make these few circuits, uh, so it loses its speed and. Uh, capacity every now and then. So now it, uh, it took me two and a half hours. I need to get the new engine. You warm up the solution. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can you can see that 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 white tub there. It it's has the hot water, water yeah. in, in the middle. Then I wash away the uh, the 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 tracks. You can see the black stuff, the toner with acetone, and after more scrubbing and a little more sanding, you get a mirror-like finish again. And then you just commandeer your relative's power tool <laughs> and uh, for one dollar you get a one millimeter bit and that's what I drill the holes with on here. It gets a straight through hole with that low press. And then five minutes later uh, you have all the holes uh, drilled. A nice way to test is the, the light test. You hold it up to a light source and if all the holes shine through then you've uh, you've successfully hold all, uh, drilled the, all of them. If, if there are a few that don't, then you obviously have to continue work. And it sucks to be able to have soldered all your components and yes. you're about to go in and you realize you have, yeah, missed a hole. Uh, yes, I did a sloppy soldering job yesterday, but uh, I didn't have a chair I had to do a standing up. But that's what I got. And we have light, so it was, it was working properly the first time. So I just plug it in, and it's basically the test circuit compared to what not. So from start to finish, it took about four and a half hours. Uh, and I guess that's, that's around about what it should be. The, this was a simple board, but I've done a complex one, this one, the one I've had. Yeah, over there. So that's that's the that's the ski, uh, schematics for that one. How did you line up the back and the front? Oh, that's interesting. I printed out. I, I took this these uh, these layouts into Photoshop, and I aligned the holes on both of them, 
uh, using the Photoshop guide, and I created just four, four pixel wide dots. Like you can barely see them. Put them, printed it out, cut it in half, and then using a sewing needle, I, I uh, poked through the hole that I made, and then poked through its complement 